So before we get started on this video, this is something I haven't really done before. Um, you know, I have been doing a little bit of political stuff lately, uh, a little bit more spicy, charged stuff than usual. They're not really taking off very well. I don't really care at this point. So right now, the world is facing something super serious. Um, something that, you know, it's one of those once in a lifetime kind of deals. And, you know, we've already been through a few of those. You know, we had the coronavirus. And now, possibly World War III. Now, this has been escalating for years. Uh, Putin's regime is basically, you know, they've had a lot of threats. He's wanting the Soviet Union back. And this is a guy that just doesn't give a fuck at all. Now, some of the things I've been seeing lately that cracks me up, and, you know, I don't know if this is, you know, would have changed the outcome, but some people are saying that he's afraid of Biden. No, I don't, I don't think he's afraid of Biden. I, my personal opinion, nobody takes Biden seriously. Nobody, nobody, nobody. He's not afraid of him. Then they say, well, if Trump was in office, this wouldn't have happened. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. You know, a lot of people are saying that Trump and Putin was best buds. We don't know that. We're just guessing. We're just assuming that's what happened. A lot of people take it as truth. Um, and we talk about misinformation coming from both sides. We actually don't know what's going on on either side. We don't know what would have happened, what outcomes that may have been if Trump was in office. Now, Trump was a whole lot more stern, I guess, compared to Biden. You know, a lot of people, they think Biden's a goofy fuck. And a lot of people, when Trump was in office, they thought he was a whiny baby. This is true. Truth both ends. This is why I say things like there's a difference between a liberal, being a liberal and being a leftist, or being a conservative and being on the right. You try to put yourself in middle ground, but ultimately you're going to swing one way or the other. And as of late, I have been, you know, more on the right side than on the left. But I have liberal and conservative views. I try to be balanced. I try to be honest with you guys. I, you know, here, I, I again will say this. I voted for Trump twice. The first time I have ever voted for conservative or Republican. I've always voted Democrat. I was going to vote for Bernie Sanders twice. The DMC fucked him twice. That was my thing. I, I like Bernie Sanders. I, I was cool with it. The one thing I don't like, I don't like woke children and these crazy people on the left. Then we have the crazy racists that hide on the right. In my opinion, both sides are kind of racist. We kind of talked about that a little bit the other day when I said a lot of these woke white kids are insecure with themselves. So they take the voice away from other communities to make it the, their own in order to prop themselves up to get that internet cred, that sweet internet cred. I'm kind of rambling here at this point. So I was watching a channel I, I, I highly recommend, Yellow Flash 2. I had a video, which came out earlier today. <laughs> the title of it is Do Not Misgender Ukrainians During the Russian Invasion. Woke liberals say it's a real problem. And some of the shit that's coming out of this is amazing. So one of the things that I thought was funny, I'll go ahead and read it off here. I'm not going to give the names. I don't want to give these people more cred. One of the things that was funny, Twitter user, 
I don't know if there was a blue check mark, but they fit that stereotype. Remind mer <laughs> Reminder not to assign gender to anyone in Ukraine when tweeting about World War III. Remember to use correct terms like folks with an X when referring to all Ukrainian folks with an X. It's not hard to be inclusive of all genders in Ukraine. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Honestly. Why? Honestly, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? People are actually dying. The only thing you care about is jitterfication. Your priorities need checked, honestly. And if I had to say it, you're kind of retarded. And yes, I said retarded. It's 2022. Fuck off. I can say what I want. So we're gonna, we, we still have a bevy of a few more. I'm only going to do a couple of these. <laughs> the next one is a lot of people in Ukraine crowding together inside. Now, what it means by this, there are these metro stations and shelters that a lot of the citizens are actually hiding in to try to stay protected from the war outside. Good example, and I, you know, I hate to make something light of this, there's a video game, video game series called Metro. And they lived in metros underground due to nuclear war that happened within those countries. Pretty good game. But in all seriousness, it's scary. So this person said, Only 35% of Ukrainians have been vaccinated. Less than 2% have been boosted. Again, we're still worrying about the coronavirus. I had the coronavirus. Okay, I had. I have family that's had the coronavirus. You know, it's scary. It sucks. But that's, that's over. It's still around, but it's over. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. At all. Nobody. Nobody. Just let it die. Let it go. Let it go. Quit dooming. Quit glooming. Stop. You know, I was vaccinated. I didn't get boosted because, you know, they didn't say I needed to get boosted. But I got boost. I didn't get boosted. And I still got it. I actually got it worse than some of my family members. Vaccinated and they was unvaccinated. So tell me how that happens. Vaccinated or not, you're still going to catch it. It only helps a little bit. Get over it, please. That doesn't take priority to what's going on outside. There's people dying. Got one more here. This isn't discussed much, but Putin very much benefits from white privilege. I just can't see a scenario in which black or brown men running Russia would be allowed to invade Ukraine with no devastating consequences. See Crimea in 2014. White supremacists will destroy us. No. No. Stop. Stop. This has nothing to do with white privilege. Has nothing to do about race. Stop. Stop fucking doing it. Please. It's annoying. It's ridiculous. Stop. Stop trying to make it about you. Stop it. You fucking weirdo. It kind of pisses me off just a little bit because why would you even think about something like that when something huge is going on. You still have to get your message out. You gotta make, you gotta, you gotta post some really cringy shit. We all seen the video that, I think she was a model or an actress, that had this fucking long diatribe about wanting to be Putin's mom, to give him love, to show him what love is. 
the most cringy fucking thing you ever watch. You can find it on YouTube, I'm sure. It's just cringy white woman. Just look it up. It's it's there. I'm not playing it. None of this stuff has anything to do with the situation that's going on. It's more serious. You can stay in La La Land, which is Twitter, where, you know, everybody agrees with you. Just fuck off, please. Please. Fuck off with that. All of it. Like, serious. It's annoying. So, in other news... There was a uh, incident, well, I guess it's something that happened on Snake Island 13 in Ukraine involving a Russian warship and these heroes, I think there was 13 or 15 of them, these heroes stood up for their country in the most badass way you can think honestly it's it's pretty crazy so in a video the russian warship basically just says hey you need to give up surrender drop your weapons all that jazz or we're going to fire on you and what he said back the balls on these guys heroes fucking heroes Told him to fuck off. Told him to fuck off. Fuck straight off. Sadly, they perished. But you're seeing stories coming from the Ukraine. Citizens, politicians, famous people even. Sports people, like soccer players. Race car drivers, doctors, children, old men. Stepping out, grabbing guns to fight back. It's admirable. Despite the odds. And the odds aren't that great. But these people are fighting for their lives. Putin actually implied there it could launch nuclear weapons against any country that interferes with this military campaign in Ukraine. Right now, a lot of countries are putting sanctions on Russia. These sanctions aren't working. You're just poking the bear at this point. Pissing off Putin, which I don't, it's not a good idea. The guy's crazy. If anybody's going to push the button, will it be him or Kim Jong-un? Those people will push the button. Using the nuclear option, which the nuclear option doesn't make sense. If you're a military strategist, the last thing you want to do is use a nuclear weapon. If you, Unless it's absolute... Nobody gains anything from a nuclear strike. You probably want to, well, well, it takes out the enemy. Yeah, it does. It does. But if you're trying to get more ground, more strategic points, you don't take them out with a nuke because that area becomes radioactive and poison, basically. Unusable for years. Unusable. Nobody wins. All the resources are spoiled from that area. You may have killed a lot of people. A lot of people will die. You know. And it's not good. It's not good. A lot of people will die. This is scary. This is actually scary. I mean, there might be a chance that we experience nuclear war. Something we haven't seen since World War II. And Russia has nukes. 
one of the scary things is what if Russia and China decide to band together? One of the things I thought of, and I'm sure a lot of people thought this would happen, is, you know, while they're attacking Ukraine, China just says, hey, you know what? Everybody's occupied with Ukraine. Let's go ahead and take Taiwan. Or, or North Korea is like, yeah, fuck everybody. I'm going to fire off whatever nukes we have at South Korea, Japan, wherever. Wherever they can land, you'll fire them off. We're going to World War III. It's happening. If we like it or not, it's happening. I don't think our army can hold off powers like China and Russia at the same time while we're dealing with problems in our own, our own country. We, you know, everybody's burning everything down. The border is overran. Our neighbors to the north is basically being a dictator, trying to control this freedom convoy, which, you know, it's their right to protest what they believe in. But so they're going to strip those away from those people. We're too worried about what happened on January 6th. Something that... It doesn't matter. But we need to kind of be prepared for what's happening next. I don't want to be a doomer. But I don't want things that spill out into this country. You, know, What if we get attacked? We're not ready for that. We're not ready for a nuclear strike. We're not. We have nukes. But it'll be mutually assured destruction. Nobody wins. And if you think that motherfucker won't push the button, you're crazy. He's going to hit the button. It's going to happen. By the end of this, something really, really bad is going to happen. It's going to be a lot of deaths. So stop with the whole woke messaging Stop with the coronavirus shit. It's not appropriate. It's not appropriate. Stop with the cringy bullshit. Take it serious. Nobody cares about the woke message. The only people who care are the blue check marks and the Halloween Hollywood elite. Again, you'll probably make fun of me trying to get my words out because I'm a stuttering, stuttering idiot. See? See, I do that all the time. A stuttering, stuttering idiot. But we just have to, we just have to not fucking do this. It's not appropriate. Be serious. This has nothing to do with race. This has nothing to do with gender. It has nothing to do with the coronavirus. It has nothing to do with that. It'll be interesting to see how things pan out in the next couple of weeks, honestly. Um, I hope the best for the people of Ukraine. Hope things turn around. We need to stop this. We need to stop this. Throw your support to people in Ukraine. Do the best you can. See you guys later.